Happy weekday of your choice, Wonder Beings. Welcome. My name is Pamela Bisson. Uh, I will be your host for today in this Boss Your Life Masterclass. So welcome. Confidence is a process, not a destination. I just wanted to send out some good vibes this morning to remind you all of this, wherever you are located in your cycle, in your life, uh, that you don't just arrive at confidence. Uh, this sort of sum, sum up, sums it up a little bit, bossing your life. There's lots of areas, lots of layers to the terminology bossing your life. But the fact that it's confidence that will guide us through whatever we want to do in life, wherever we want to be. I just wanted to remind you all that it is a process. There will be days when you're going to feel fabulously confident and there'll be days where you won't. And the key is to understand why, where you're at hormonally, whether you're male or female, uh, on your period, your cycle, uh, your perimenopause or otherwise, um, where you're located, who you've just spoken to, what energies are you allowing into your life. Uh, with all of that, uh, it will set you straight on a path of understanding that confidence is a process. And you must always find some fantastic tools that will enable you to kickstart that confidence uh, and keep you going on the right path. Okay, so uh, I did a little bit of digging, a little bit of research on the fabulous members uh, at the Royal Television Society. And following a survey um, that was sent out, there were quite a few headline subject matters. And I thought that they were really pertinent uh, and in alignment with bossing your life. So today we're going to be discussing emotional intelligence in the media. Uh, and expanding your network for life, I did say that word, uh, and building relationships that truly last, dealing with challenging people in television, and uh, truly understanding sort of some of the different roles, but more importantly, the relationships uh, within the media. And uh, last but not least, when I said no and lived happily ever after, uh, this is how to, how and where to find opportunities that truly align to your career goals. And it's one of my favorites. So looking forward to sharing that. A little bit about myself. I uh, birthed a human during the pandemic. I had the pleasure of birthing a little human. Uh, I'm a boss your life media coach. So I'm a career empowerment coach. I support women in aligning their soul's purpose. I'm also a media trainer and I work with companies such as Screen Skills. Um, I'm recently working with the National Film and TV School, as well as Beck2 in offering training and production training uh, across the media. And before I move on, uh, I must say that the fabulous woman in this picture is my mummy. And uh, you'll see a narrative throughout today's masterclass that in anything that you do, you should truly enjoy it and have fun, but it always doesn't have to be super serious. Uh, professionalism absolutely is paramount, but you should always be enjoying it. And uh, this is uh, me at ING, whilst I was at Premier League Productions, and I gave a little tour of the studios uh, with my mummy, and she got me into a lot of trouble uh, flirting with everybody uh, in production, <laughs> um, but uh, was, yeah, a, a true honour and a pleasure to be able to showcase to my mum uh, what it meant to be a production manager and what that looked like. So, yeah, I thought I'd share that with you. Also, my story, uh, just a quick run through. I have been a consultant in television production, uh, production manager, uh, producer, production executive, a runner, a translator. Uh, I'm also a Kung Fu master in Wing Chun. And I've got about 20 odd years experience working within television and media, but more importantly, the communication industry, because that's essentially what it's all about. Okay, so I have one hour, give or take with you guys. So what I've decided to do is to create a little digital Padlet. Um, so Kirsty, if you'd love to share this uh, in the chat for us, please. Uh, it is basically an opportunity for you to pen any questions that you have as you're listening. You can pen some of your thoughts, any stories you want to share. And also it's a little digital resource that you can take with you. I have put some tools, a little bit of reading, 
uh, and some other links that you can have a look in your own time uh, in regards to what it means to, to bossing your life. So uh, if you all head to padlet.com forward slash Pamela Bisson forward slash boss your life and uh, any questions, any queries, uh, please feel free to use uh, throughout the duration of this masterclass. Uh, myself and Kirsty will then revisit this masterclass at the end, um, this Padlet rather at the end, uh, and read out some of the questions and answer some of your questions or queries. These are just a few companies that have had the pleasure of my experience. Uh, the uh, Olympics, IMG, BBC, Fremantle, I was at X Factor, um, the Premier League, as I mentioned, uh, currently working with Beck2. Uh, Alarabi Television, which was a wonderful experience, a wonderful cultural experience, uh, and Red Bull Media. Uh, I was with them at, at Austria, Brazil, and the UK. So yeah, lo lots of fun. Bossing your life in the media, as I've alluded to already, is all about enjoying yourself, but also about understanding your experiences and what that means for you as a human being. Uh, there are many layers to who we are and what we can achieve, and it's important that we are constantly learning from these engagements, whether challenging, positive or otherwise. Uh, so I've just got three quick uh, stories that I'd like to share with you. Uh, on the left uh, is a photo of me at the Islamic Games, and um, I was a senior producer uh, I was asked to come on board just after I finished the, the uh, Rio Olympics. And the main challenge I had in, in Baku was that I had a fantastic team, but we couldn't all speak each other's languages. So we had Azerbaijani, uh, Spanish, Russian, uh, English, uh, but we couldn't all speak each other's language. And yet we had a production to create. We had to go out and, and get these highlights and, and make these sport, sport packages. Uh, and a little tip uh, that I love to share with you guys that, that I utilized uh, was at the beginning of every trip to the stadium, we would put music on in the car. And I'd always ask someone to choose a track that they love. And we would play it super loud for the entire time of our journey. We would laugh, we would dance, we would sing. And I did this every single day. Uh, the point of this was to remind us all that we can all connect regardless of whether we're not able to verbally speak each other's language and to show that there's a commonality. So that when we were on the production floor, when we were uh, filming, interacting professionally, uh, we found that there was a human side before we started our professional side. Uh, and it meant that we won an award for one of our coverage um, and had lots of fun. And I made loads of friends. We're all in contact still via social media. The picture in the middle is with me with two amazing women, presenters and producers at BBC Africa. Uh, this was my first time working with uh, women mostly of colour and uh, especially here in the UK. It was very challenging in that we all had a fantastic time, but there were a lot of unconscious biases that still exist in production and still exist in the media. And we mustn't be blind to it. OK, I had a great experience everywhere that I went and I took all of the great stuff from it, uh, but I was very open and aware of what was happening. Um, I'd always wanted to work for the BBC anywhere that I've ever wanted to work. I have thought about it, manifested it and made it happen for myself. That is the secret of working and bossing your life. You've got to think about it first. Um, but I realized that although I made some fantastic friends and I had a great time and I learned a lot professionally, I was working remotely uh, for various countries in Africa as, as well as here in the UK, that it wasn't aligned. And so I left. Um, it's not the kind of environment that I wanted to be in. And I took the good. Uh, I learned from the challenges and I moved on. And then last but not least is a quick picture uh, with Jackie Oatley, who's a BBC sports presenter. And this was during my time at Premier League. Um, and this, again, similarly to the BBC, a fantastic experience in that I learned a lot professionally within production. Working with a very male heavy team meant that there weren't uh, sort of this diverse dynamics. Um, and again, that taught me a lot about myself that I've been able to carry on uh, into my time working in the industry. Right, uh, so 
I'm going to get started on the emotional intelligence and expanding your network for life. Just a, a quick overview. Um, emotional intelligence, it refers to the ability to identify and manage one's own emotion as well as the emotions of others. Now, often when we think of emotions, we think soft. Uh, we think, you know, how do you quantify emotions? Is it a, really a skill? And it's a super skill. And it's a skill that you must continue to develop for yourself within anything that you want to do in life, not just within the industry. Uh, you, want, you want to have a better relationship with your partner, uh, with your family, with your friends, uh, with your community, with your society. Understanding emotional intelligence uh, is the key ingredient. Um, it's something that I've actually always put on my CV, uh, that I have emotional intelligence and that I'm constantly working on improving that. Um, but it's important to also understand that it's not something you control. Your emotional intelligence is something that you manage. Um, so it, in regards to where you get your emotions from, I'm not going to go too scientific at this stage. I've got a bit of a science bit later on. Hormones are secreted. And these various hormones will then uh, determine how you actually feel. But you get to decide on whether or not you want to have those feelings. You actually have that choice. So I'll give you a quick example. Um, I track my cycle, which means that I know what day I'm on uh, regarding my period and my hormone levels. So I actually understand emotionally where I'm at. And by doing that, I'm better placed to understand how I'm going to react to others, what things are gonna irk me, uh, what things I'm uh, gonna have more energy for and what things I'm not. Um, and tracking your cycle isn't something just that, that women can do or, or people who identify as women. Uh, anyone can track their cycle, men, aliens, and otherwise. Uh, so a quick example is your cortisol level. Cortisol uh, is a stress hormone that's actually required for your survival. And in the morning, it should be really high. So it gets you out of bed, it gets you motivated for the day. And then throughout the day, it should slowly dip and your cortisol level should be super low at the end. Um, the reason why I'm sharing that with you, working in the media is often always high energy. Go, 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 go. Uh, and you've got to understand your cortisol levels, where they're at and why they may be misaligned. So are you waking up going, oh my goodness, I have no energy, I don't want to do this. You can then evaluate why that's happening and what that means for you and your day. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave you with, with that. There are about nine give or take uh, points regarding emotional intelligence and sort of the key headline areas. I'm gonna share three with you. And uh, one is you can communicate assertively and you're able to address conflict. Now, working in a media environment, working in any type, it can be um, slightly stressful, highly stressful, extremely stressful, all depending on your view and how you address conflict. What does that mean for you? Uh, on a side note, it's one of the reasons why I did Kung Fu 18 years ago uh, to actually help me understand how to manage conflict. Um, so communicating assertively isn't shouting, uh, isn't uh, using rude words, uh, isn't belittling, isn't allowing your ego to get in the way of what it is that you need to say. Um, I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, share with you rather a quick story. This is me in Baku at the Islamic Games with my fantastic team. Uh, we all can speak each other's languages, as I mentioned earlier. And where I had to utilize some of my emotional intelligence uh, during this Games was we had a fabulous camera woman uh, to my right, probably to your left, who was having a challenging time getting the images that she needed um, of the various sports that, that we were filming. And namely because she was being told that as a woman, she shouldn't be working as a camera person and that she sh that's not her place. Um, and I heard a lot of this go going on. Uh, a lot of it was also translated to myself. Um, and I was really angry. I was like, oh my goodness, this woman's amazing. And how can we still be discussing this uh, in the 21st century? Uh, but I took a deep breath, uh, uh, evaluated my surroundings, and I went down to the pit and literally just addressed uh, the, the men in question and told them that she's here to do a professional job, that we're here as a team. 
and that uh, she will be doing X, Y, and Z. And if anybody has any further issues to come to myself, and I was shaking inside, you know, I'm not a superhero with a cape, although we are secretly, uh, all of us. Um, but for me, the bigger goal was the importance of, a, of ensuring that my team was gonna get what they needed um, and that we were here to enjoy ourselves. Um, after that, we literally was having orange juice and sandwiches with the rest of the camera crew. Um, and, you know, everyone, uh, we, we were able to work amicably together throughout the games. Empathy. Now, empathy, on a quick side note, is such a key element of emotional intelligence. It's actually the secret in um, whether or not you're going to get a second date. <laughs> um, with whoever you're dating because if you can empathize and it doesn't mean that you have to necessarily have had the same experience you can just empathize with that individual they feel loved they feel like oh my goodness this one this person understands me um, and it's a great way of building real relationships in any aspects of your life and a quick story that I'd like to share with you uh, regarding empathy was during my time at Premier League, I was mainly uh, managing and working with men of various ages. And there was a young guy that turned up and he had a black eye and he walked into the office and uh, everyone was sort of, oh, what's happening? What's going on? Some people were laughing, you know, other people said, oh my goodness, what's happening? And he said, oh, I was playing football and, you know, somebody elbowed me in the eye. And as he was explaining this, I was looking at his body language. Um, I'd known a little bit about him and his background and his story. And it wasn't aligning what he was saying in the production office um, and uh, potentially what I felt he was feeling. So rather than uh, creating a story in my mind, I decided to ask him in for a quick chat, uh, just to, you know, how are you feeling? What, what's happening? If you want to share anything, uh, you know, if, if you want to go home, that's okay. And as soon as I did that, he burst into tears and he explained that his girlfriend had actually punched him in the face um, and they'd broken up. Uh, that she was apparently super violent um, and he was finding it really difficult and really challenging and that he was so sorry that he turned up at work like this. Um, and I sort of, I looked at him and I said, firstly, I am sorry to hear that. And secondly, please go home that we can manage the rest of the day. Uh, he was sort of adamant that he wanted to stay. And I said, that's absolutely fine. I was production managing at the time. I said, I'll take over your role. We've got production coordinators. We're, we're all gonna be fine. Um, and literally what happened after that day was that there was the level of communication that we had was out of this world. Um, it was consistent and it was all just because I empathized with his situation and I made the professional side of it work somehow. Um, he's much happier now, just so that you're all aware. We're friends on Facebook. He has a new girlfriend um, and he's doing well. Uh, he's producing now as well, which is su I'm super glad to hear. Right, uh, I've got a bit of a question for you all. So just to use your brain for a moment. Um, if you had 83,000 pounds and you lost or somebody stole, let's say 10,000 uh, pounds, would you chuck it away? Uh, you know, would you chuck out the, the, the remaining uh, 70 odd thousand? Um, I would like to think that you would say no. That you would be like, no, well, absolutely not. You know, if I've if I've lost ten thousand, I, I want to keep the, the seventy three thousand that still exists. I like to use that as an example because there are about eighty three thousand seconds in a day, and if for ten seconds of that day somebody says something mean to you, somebody said something um, uh, toxic, or there was a challenging situation, why allow yourself? to completely throw away the 73,000 seconds that you have of the day, thinking about that scenario, going over it in your head, feeling sorry about it, feeling sad about it. Um, and it's another really key emotional intelligence tool um, that you're not allowing one bad moment to ruin your whole day. Uh, you know, being self-aware of your emotions throughout the day. And this comes back to the point that I mentioned about your hormone levels. Um, 
you know, right now I'm on day 18 of my cycle, which means that I have a lot of estrogen. Estrogen boosts your energy. Uh, you need to get rid of estrogen. You can't keep it in your body. Uh, it's not healthy, um, but it makes you feel great, uh, alive. You can do anything. I feel like I can take over the world. Um, and there are other days, <laughs> maybe closer to when my period is actually starting, where my hormone levels are not going to be this great. I'm going to have maybe more progesterone, which actually means I'm going to be a bit more introverted. I'm going to be a bit more less social. Um, and I have to understand that based on where all of those hormones are, I'm going to react differently or maybe receive that toxic or challenging environment differently. So again, the key to bossing your life is truly understanding yourself. Um, you know, during our time in media production or, or producing, there are going to be challenges. Uh, someone may say something out of turn. Uh, communication, uh, it's a skill set that we don't really go to school for. We don't really learn. It's something we have to learn ourselves. So culturally, you may have different people within your production uh, that's, that uh, approach things differently, that vocalize things differently. Um, and it's really important to understand what that means for you firstly in terms of where you are so that you can uh, approach it in a way that's going to be conducive, conducive and really positive um so being aware of your emotions definitely throughout the day is really important how much are you eating how much coffee um are you topping up your energy levels uh are, you know are you snapping because your sugar levels have dipped you need to ensure that you're eating healthily throughout the day um, and something to be mindful of as you're working on production, whether you're on location, in a studio, or, or based in an office. Okay, so with understanding your emotions, where you're at, what that means for you, uh, it's really important to know that uh, the best time to build a network is always before you need one. So bossing your life is being in abundance mode. We only talk about strength and abundance. Um, you know, we, we're not here to dwell on what you're not great at uh, or to dwell on surviving. We don't want to survive, we want to thrive. Uh, so the best time to build a network is when you don't need one. Uh, where are you working right now? Are you taking a bit of a break? Are you going on holiday maybe? Um, uh, you have you already found a fantastic media role that works for you? Uh, so you're sort of thinking, well, I don't need to contact anyone, right? No, <laughs> uh, always keep building those relationships, uh, keep nurturing them. And I know that's something challenging as humans, I would say maybe within the Western ideology that we have of friendships, for example, where we feel, oh, we've made our friends aged 11 or aged 18 or, or 20, whatever at university. And that's, you know, my network. And I'm going to continue nurturing that network. And it's important to keep communications and, and developing uh, your friendships, absolutely. But it's also important to evolve and keep bringing new ones into your life. So a good way of um, almost helping you with that habit of creating new networks is to try it in your friendship circle. Make a new friend, uh, you know, Bumble Friends. It's not just a dating app. It was created by a fantastic woman. Uh, and I go on there to make new friends. When I became a mom, I wanted to create new friends um, or invite new friends rather into my life. You can always create new friends in your mind. Absolutely. Um, and that will sort of help you when it comes to understanding how to then build your network or, or give you the behavior uh, patterns to help you create new networks within the industry because it will come naturally if you're allowing new people into your friendship circle into your personal life and then the natural transition uh, would be also to do that within your career so i'm going to give you uh, some great tips on how to network these are my favorite i've done it the majority of my life um, saying that as a person who's always evolving, if you've got any extra tips in networking, please add them to the Padlet. Network in all directions. So peer-to-peer, -peer, so whether you're a production accountant, coordinator, manager, um, a senior producer, assistant producer, um, it's important to absolutely know who's in the game, who's playing right now in the media. What are they doing? How are they doing it? How are they navigating? Um, and so think of this as a, a long game in terms of relationships. Share and learn from others. 
make long-term relationships and please use LinkedIn, uh, a great tool to do that. Check in. It's not just building relationships with people who can get you a job today. It's about building relationships with people who may already be in a role that can give you nuggets, information that you can share. Um, you know, there are so many a time throughout my life in production where, you know, I, I've called somebody uh, from Portugal that I worked with and I said, I'm trying to find this thing and I don't know how to do it. And the other fellow production manager will be like, oh, well, I've got that thing. Let me help you do that. Um, and I can only do that if I keep building my network, not just with the people I'm working with, but with new people that I haven't worked with. Be reciprocal. So, be genuinely interested in other people's projects and challenges. So if you're going to contact a decision maker, for example, uh, somebody who could potentially um, uh, assist you in getting a job within that production, that film, that documentary or otherwise, be genuinely interested in what they're about. Do a little bit of research on them. Um, what do they like to read? What kind of posts have they liked? Um, and it's a great conversation starter. Uh, it's also a great way of actually building a genuine relationship, um, if that's important to you, because we're all transactional in very different ways. But um, for me, that was something that was important and that was key in, in ensuring that I continued having a relationship throughout my time in the industry. Um, offering support and advice. Uh, you know, be known as somebody who offers help to others as well as asking for things. Uh, make it a mutual relationship. Uh, you know, I've coached some amazing women that uh, I have given every last bit of blood <laughs> in terms of information, wanting to support them. And miraculously, they all come back and do exactly the same for me. They constantly keep in touch. They share things that are interesting. Um, and it's important to do that within your relationships, within your career as well. OK, start small. As I mentioned, uh, with inviting new friends in your life so that you can then move on to inviting new working people or, or media based people into your life. Um, to truly change a habit, you have to start with your behavior and you have to look at what that means for you. So whether you are at an industry event, um, face to face or online, uh, small talk is really good. And depending on where you are culturally, because they know in Sweden, they're not a fan of small talk. You've got to get straight to the point. Um, but don't go straight into your elevator pitch. My name's Mella. Um, I've just finished university and I need a job. Will you help me? Um, uh, you know, I, I'm looking for a job in production and I hear that you're recruiting. Use your emotional intelligence to read the room, read the person and ask them questions. Find out about why they're here, um, uh, you know, what things interest them, find commonalities. Uh, start small as you build into that um, uh, sort of bigger ask in your conversation. And, you know, when you naturally get to, to, to work, you, you know, ask what exciting projects they're working on. Um, you know, that's a good way of transitioning from maybe small talk into let's go into professional mode. I really liked that one because I was actually genuinely interested. I only want to work in fantastic projects. So I wanted to hear the other person going, well, we're about to do this crazy thing where you put people in a house with cameras uh, and it's going to blow your mind. Um, so that's a really good one. And, you know, just give the conversation some time to develop. That's that's really key. Uh, any time and any place, bear with me. Networking doesn't just have to happen in an industry-based event. I found out really early on uh, during my, my time in the media that it's expected that you're going to exchange business cards back then or now LinkedIn uh, profiles and everybody sort of knows why you're here. So yes, there may, may, may make an effort but they may also feel like, oh, there's just so much. I'm being bombarded. Um, you know, is there anything original? Is anyone actually sharing something different with me? Or is everyone just asking me for a job? Uh, so I liked the, the thinking that you can actually just network anytime and any place um, with friends in social settings. Um, you know, I've got a picture of a wedding here where I had a conversation with somebody who was an executive. 
uh, we were having a wonderful time in the sun and they explained that they've got a project that they um, needed help getting greenlit. Would I like to help remotely? And I said, absolutely, uh, in between dancing um, and throwing confetti. So just be open to that. It will also help you in terms of um, when you're actually doing it in an industry event. So you're creating those little behaviors and changing the habits. So if you feel um, a, a little bit concerned about approaching people or how to start a conversation, doing it in a natural setting uh, or more of a social setting can really help you transition when you're in a um, sort of industry-based environment. Uh, another one is emailing, following up with emails as well. And uh, it's something that I've done a lot in the past when I've seen a role that I really want, um, uh, but it may have been taken or uh, the post no longer exists. So I get in touch with the decision maker on LinkedIn, uh, get their email address, and I normally signpost it with something really compelling. And it's often something that's aligned to them. So have a look at some of their interests, obviously be making it in alignment with what you wanna say. Keep your emails concise, get personal, get straight to the point, have a clear ask and be persistent. Really important that, um, you know, whether you're doing it because you saw somebody online or they are somebody that you've actually met and they've given you your, that your email, uh, their email um, information and they've not got back to you after a week. I've coached amazing women and they've gone, well, oh, they didn't get back to me, so I've moved on. I'm all a fan of abundance and keep moving forward, absolutely. Um, but touch base, you networked with them. There could be many reasons as to why they didn't get back to you. Don't assume that it's because you wrote something terrible. Uh, don't assume uh, that they no longer want to speak to you or that the position is filled. They could have moved on from their role. Um, they could be away on holiday. There could be so many reasons as to why somebody uh, isn't getting back to you once you've made that initial contact. And yeah, be persistent whilst always having your mindset in abundance mode and moving forward. Okay, so bossing your life is always about checking in how you're feeling and where you're at. And I just want to do a quick uh, virtual uh, check in with everybody in the room today. Uh, Kirsty, if you could kindly send this menti code. Uh, and if you go to www.menti.com and enter the code 712-997-00, you will be able to just share how you're feeling. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna share the screen so that you can all see, oh, wow the words that are gonna pop up. So uh, we've got motivated, interested, positive, a little bit sluggish. We've got a typo, unless somebody's feeling A, I don't know, that could be a, a new thing. Um, what have we got? Hopeful, optimistic, feeling happiness. This is all anonymous, by the way, everyone, so your names won't, won't be shown. Uh, feeling stressed. Uh, fabulous and empowered, feeling calm, tired, nervous, refreshed. I think it, it, excited, optimistic and positive uh, seem to be uh, the main feelings uh, of everyone in the room. That's why it's highlighted. Um, they're in bold. So thank you very much for sharing, everyone. Uh, oh, we've got energized. That's just popped in. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it going in the background um, until it stops. A, a really important exercise just to do in life in general. How are you feeling? And it's something that I now ask everyone. I'm no longer asking uh, how you're doing. Uh, it's how are you feeling? Because that will let me know where that person's at. Um, you know, are they stressed, right? Maybe we need to do a bit of breathing exercise beforehand before we have a chat. Let's take a moment. Let's not go straight into it. 
And it's something that I had learned during my time in media production, that uh, to get the best out of my team, I truly need to understand how they're feeling as well as myself. So thank you very much, everyone, for sharing. Okay. So dealing with challenging people or challenging people in, in the TV world, sort of just understanding some of the roles and the relationships in the media. Now, it's going to be slightly controversial, everyone, um, and I hope that you're okay with that. Uh, because I know I've stated here understanding different roles and relationships. And I was thinking, well, I could really go down the road of explaining the role between a production manager and a production coordinator and um, all the hierarchical uh, titles that we're given in this capitalist patriarchal system. Um, but then I decided, what if I told you that it actually just starts with you. And it starts with a hug, bear with me. I know it's a pandemic, bear with me. This, this, yeah, you, you, it will all make sense. Um, it's a little acronym that I use when working with anyone challenging. And the reason why I'm gonna share this with you is because regardless of where you are in the food chain, in the hierarchical uh, model, the anonogram um, within the company, the production, the studio, the shop floor, you ultimately have to decide on whether or not this challenging person uh, is, um, no, you have to decide where, where, how you're going to manage the situation because you have no control of the other person. So first of all, we need to hear them. Uh, when you've got somebody that's super challenging, uh, that's requesting something, that's not able to communicate, uh, we're often in our own minds because we've created an unconscious bias picture of who this person is. We've labeled them, right? They're the angry one. They're the happy one. When actually we have all different layers. Uh, so in our minds, we're, we're quick to just want to respond and sometimes attack uh, or defend if you're doing Kung Fu or karate um, and you want to attack or defend your position right now. Somebody's asked you to do something. They've said it in a really challenging voice and you just want to go Rah! or actually, no, that's not what happened and bat it back at them. Um, it's really important just to step back and actually just listen to what that person is saying. Take out the emotion, the tonality, take out the unconscious bias that you have about that individual um, and respond back to them what they've actually asked you. And what you're doing is you're doing a bit of empathy there as well. You're actually empathizing with them. We have no idea what's happened to that challenging director, producer or individual because a lot of the time we don't actually share, we don't say that we're actually feeling stressed, sluggish, tired. Um, and we just assume that everybody's on our frequency. So, you know, they could have lost a, a parent that morning. Uh, they could have had a really bad accident, but felt that they still needed to be in the office. They made that choice. Um, so often just communicating from a, a super professional and a logical perspective in that moment uh, will ensure that you are communicating effectively. So you can say something like, here's what I heard you say. Is this what you meant? Um, and a lot of the time, uh, it actually shifts people's behavior because they're like, oh, you heard me, uh, as opposed to uh, you just saw this scary person shouting at you. So with my HUG acronym, let's start with hearing. Then the U is to do the uncommon thing. And I've mentioned this a lot within Bossing Your Life in the Media. It's, it's actually just empathizing. Let them know that you understand where they come from. Uh, and I'm going to just caveat that with, it doesn't mean that you agree with them. When somebody says, I understand, it doesn't mean that you agree. Uh, and that's really important to, to acknowledge that. So you're, you're not relinquishing any um, thoughts or feelings that you might have about their behavior. You're understanding where they're coming from based on having asked what they heard, what you heard. Um, and it, what's really important with that is, People then feel like you've gone over and beyond. Uh, you're connecting with them because often people don't want to understand. They actually just want to say how they're feeling and what they 
uh, want to um, uh, react to that challenging scenario, whether you're in production on the studio floor, documentaries, making a film or otherwise, uh, or even in the office. Um, and the key thing, it, it isn't about egos. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not about being right or being wrong. It's just, it, it's, it's about being safer in your mind. It's healthier for your stress levels. Um, and that's the key thing. You're actually doing a lot for your well-being, and you're protecting yourself. Um, you know, sometimes we sort of, we lose compassion in our day-to-day -day habitual obsessive living. Um, you know, the, the capitalist system, a lot of the ideologies that have been created that we live in uh, aren't actually conducive to the human compassionate mind. And it's something that we tend to squash because we've got to get the job done. So do the uncommon thing and, and empathize. And then the G in hug is to guide them. This is one of my favorites. And you can use this not just in production, just not just in the moment, but at the very beginning when you've got the job, you've got that production coordinator role you've got that uh, assistant producer role that first ad role that director role um, and now it's time for you to actually outline what your terms are and um, if you do this at the very beginning it's fantastic but it's something that you should also do when you're in a challenging environment if you've not had that opportunity or if it's somebody completely new sometimes people project what's happening to them as i've mentioned onto you uh, and if you don't guide a person on how they should treat you, they will always mistreat you. And the scenarios and the conversations will always be challenging. Um, so really understand how to guide a person in how they should talk to you, in how they should engage with you. Uh, ensure that in every difficult or challenging situation, you remain respectful, you're honorable, uh, but you're not allowing people or situations to use you by just keeping quiet and not actually saying that this isn't actually how this isn't appropriate um a really quick uh, example of that that i i can share with you during my time uh, in the media um uh, oh at premier league for example uh, i was working on one of the many productions and i this was sort of a social chat, but it was still within a working environment. Um, and there was a young guy, uh, a young AP, who would always comment on my music choices at that time. I listen to frequencies now, a little less music, more frequencies. But uh, at the time, he'd always comment and he would sort of say something. Oh, you know, I'm going to the gym, for example. And he would say, oh, you're going to listen to some hardcore hip hop, hip hop or something and just use really uh, language that wasn't how I spoke. Um, and he said it once, and I was like, well, gosh, that didn't make me feel good about myself. Um, the next day he said it again. So I said to him, actually, I, that doesn't make me feel good about myself. I would rather that you didn't say that. And from then on in, he never mentioned it again because I told him, I guided him as to why that was inappropriate. And I didn't find that um, we was having a genuine, authentic conversation and it didn't make me feel good. So that's also a really good tip in how to start that guide. Um, if there, there's a challenging situation, if somebody's shouting at you, you need those production files now. I need to have this call sheet right now. Why haven't you done it? Take a moment, breathe and say, actually, what you've just said doesn't make me feel good about myself. Um, and uh, I would prefer for you not to speak to me in that tone. Really important, wherever they are on the scale. So whether they're the head of production, the CEO of the company or otherwise, it's really important that you guide that individual in what's um, aligned to you in terms of how you speak and, and what's important to yourself. Because they're not gonna know, we're not mind readers. Um, so it's not about coming from a place of anger, it's really important co coming from an empowered place, uh, whoever you're working with. Right, I just want to share a quick reminder before uh, the last 15 minutes of this session to invite you to pen your questions that you have for me at the end of the session. Uh, any questions at all regarding bossing your life on your own terms, uh, whether it's a scenario that you're going through right now, uh, whether um, it's just something that you want to ask in general, or maybe some of the topics that I've, dis I've discussed so far. 
Um, oh, great. We've got some comments coming through. They're all anonymous as well, everybody. So your names won't be on there. Uh, so please be free to be candid um, and to share what, what you truly would like some support on today. I love science. Uh, I've just had my DNA results uh, come back from Bupa if anyone's interested in working out uh, what kind of foods, what kind of physicality they need to be doing. Um, I'd recommend it. I'm not sponsored by them. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of science when it comes to dealing with challenging people. And these are sort of it's science, but it's also some tools that I hope will be able to help you set limits so like the hug acronym that i mentioned um hearing doing the uncommon thing and guiding them setting limits people that are challenging are very much in their heads they've got something that they require and when it comes from a professional environment i absolutely understand why they require that but if they're constantly being rude or callous uh, there's really a fine line between wanting to be empathetic and being sucked into that negativity and allowing them to drive your energy. So you can avoid this by distancing yourself and setting limits. Um, you know, sort of um, think of it uh, for, uh, this way. If you were working with a challenging person, um, and but they were a smoker, uh, you wouldn't sit next to them because smoking, for example, is something that you're not a fan of. So you wouldn't go, right, I'm just going to sit next to this person and just passively consume their smoke. Uh, you would move yourself or you would do what I say, especially if I'm in an environment where I can't move or I'm with my family and uh, two people have rocked up and they're smoking. I'll say, do you mind kindly uh, moving um, because we're, we're not fans of, of smoking? Really set your limit, set that limit. And that's a really great tool, guys, to also do it if you can do that out in the open in your everyday life, it will naturally translate when it comes to uh, working in the media and setting those limits with people that you're working with. Stay aware of your emotions. Where are they? I know that my emotions are super high right now. So after this, I'm going to, well, I've got a, a 2 p.m. session with the National Film and TV School, and then I'm gonna go for a massage and a walk because I'm aware of where my emotions are. They're, they're super high right now. Um, so maintain an emotional distance uh, from anyone that you know will push your buttons, uh, from anyone that you know will set triggers within a working environment. And it doesn't mean that you don't communicate with them. It means that you decide the level of communication that you're going to have with them and always maintain a professionalism. So if there's somebody that uh, you find challenging because of their tonality, uh, you're aware of that before you go in there. So you're going to address that with yourself. You hopefully have already addressed that with them before. Uh, and then you're just going to receive the information that you require for that production. Right. I need to rig this production, uh, um, I need to, sorry, recce uh, this location by this time. Thank you for letting me know that. Keep it super professional because you're aware of your emotions, where they're at um, and how you may potentially react based on the challenging person in front of you. Establish boundaries. Now, I know this is sort of a little bit similar to setting limits. With the limit, you're, you know, you're, you may be explaining it then and there, but this is more about are you working on your terms what are your per personal boundaries within a professional environment the best thing to do is to think about it actually sit down with yourself book a meeting in your diary with just you and think about what your boundaries are pen them write them down and then learn to discuss it so start with mum grandma partner dog okay preferably somebody who speaks the same language as you and not woof but um what you're doing is you're vocalizing your boundaries in a safe space and again you're allowing yourself to create new healthy habits that will turn into amazing behaviors within the working environment um, and you'll then be able to actually vocalize this with your colleagues in production live um, knowing when to do it, it's super important as well. Uh, maybe not in a, in a big meeting environment, uh, depending on how the other person receives information, taking somebody aside, having a coffee with them, whatever it is. Um, it's important to establish those boundaries. 
focus on solutions. It's scientifically proven. Uh, I read this in the Harvard Business Review. I'm a subscriber online, um, which uh, is a great site for sort of leadership and management, if, if anyone's interested. Actually, I should add that to the Padlet that when somebody offers negative information in a meeting environment, in a production meeting, in a producer's meeting, uh, without a solution, we all just switch off. And uh, that is sort of what happens when you've got a challenging person who may be giving you lots of problems and no solutions. Uh, you may switch off. Um, and it's important to understand that, again, you don't know where that individual is located. They may not have shared that with you. So ask questions in how you're going to resolve the situation and take out the, um, uh, you know, some of the, the tonality or, you know, the, the surrounding emotions that are being wrapped up in exactly what it is that the person's trying to say. So if anybody comes to me with a problem, I always ask a question. Uh, start in your life doing that. If you've got a good friend, um, it's why I coach, uh, I suppose. I've, I've learned lots uh, in how to do that in that, they come to you for a problem, with a problem. They may not have said they want advice. They may not have even said they want support. But just ask them a question. Well, how did that make you feel? Or, okay, well, how, how can we do things differently? What would you suggest we do things differently? Um, and it's a great way of empowering the individual, diffusing that challenging individual. Um, obviously, if they're coming to you for advice, you can still ask questions because that's going to give you a lot more ammunition in understanding what really the problem is. A lot of the time when we're approached in production, oh my goodness, this is happening, when actually it's just that individual can't get on with their editor, for example. So they're constantly throwing problems at you. And it's important for you to know that what's happening uh, and to find solutions by asking them questions back at them, whoever they are. At uh, whatever level they are, um, hierarchical, as, as I've mentioned, it's important that you ask those questions. Last but not least, is get some sleep like this fabulous baby. Um, it's so important that as you navigate your media career, your life, that you get sleep. Uh, there, it's scientifically proven the... Um, the wonders that sleep does for us. Um, it, the main thing, it actually helps you with increasing your emotional intelligence and managing your stress levels. Um, you know, when, you're, when you sleep, your brain is literally recharging, your whole body is recharging. Uh, so that when you wake up, you're alert. So what's your mattress like? What's the environment in your room like? Uh, in my room, I, we just have a bed and windows. There's nothing else in there. It needs to be completely dark uh, so that we can have a really good night's sleep. What's your routine leading up to going to bed? Um, just as important as your routine when you wake up. So if you don't have enough sleep, you are. It, it's going to raise your cortisol level, the one that I, I mentioned, your hormone level. Um, but it might not raise it for a good reason, the motivational re reason. Um, and so even without a stressor present, uh, you're gonna be going into environments that are hugely challenging and you've not had enough sleep on top of that. Uh, a good night's sleep will make you more positive, more creative, more proactive in your approach to toxic and challenging people in the industry. Um, so yeah, just super important to get sleep. Um, I think it's Michael, Matthew Walker, Why We Sleep. I'll add that to the Padlet as well. Um, it's a great book. Uh, a British scientist who breaks down the reasons why we need to sleep and how that can really help you within your career. Right. When I said no and lived happily ever after. Really important um, to understand that there are going to be lots of opportunities out there for you. They may not be opportunities for you. So saying yes to everything isn't always a good approach. Whether you're starting out, whether you're at the beginning of your career, the middle of your career, the end, whatever that means, there's no permanence in life and time doesn't really exist. Um, but it's really important to assert your needs um, and actually know what they are so that wherever you're going, it's conducive to you and your terms. A little takeaway. 
is to, and I do this a lot with the women that I coach on a one-to-one, is painting your professional and your soft skills and aligning them with your passion. Last but not least is to continue to develop yourself. So important. Don't stop. Don't stagnate. Um, and uh, just something that I continue to do within myself as I evolve uh, and super important in life in general. Right. So I'm going to give you some quick tips on how you can ensure that you, your financial well-being is met uh, within saying no and how to say no in a way that doesn't sound so harsh, okay? Like, just no, that's what. That rate is not going to work for me, just no. So this is some of the tips, that things that you can do. And again, I do a lot of this work with one-to-one uh, coaching. And I think I've got some of the amazing women that I coach in today's session. So hello, if you're out there in the ether. Um, work out your rate based on your personal budget, your top line and your bottom line. I know that sounds radical, right? We're always told us to, to work out our rate based on the market value. Yes, that's important. Look at the APA rates. Uh, look at the BEC2 rates. Um, there's, uh, yeah, figure out what all of that is. What are people actually charging within the industry? But what's more important and what bossing your life means is that you're working out what your expenses are. You know, are you a jet setter that wants to be on a plane every week? Um, or are you actually just a home buddy that loves being at home and going to the odd camping trip? Work out your life budget and align your rate accordingly. When negotiating, uh, and I do, I've done some in-depth negotiations, especially within my, my coaching sessions uh, when we are doing role plays, is be prepared to state that your hourly rate, your daily rate, your weekly rate, and your pro rata rate. So once you've got the job, right, you've done the interview, they've sent you an email and said you've got the job, work out the numbers and what that means for you um, if you weren't given the numbers beforehand. So for example, if a company has only 2,500 for the week, and that doesn't align to what you actually want and need in terms of your expenses and your lifestyle, uh, you could, but you really want to work for the company and they've got great values, you want to learn lots from them, then you could basically negotiate and your soft no and living happily ever after is, that's fine, I'd like to work three days a week uh, within the office and I want to work the, the other two days from home or a coffee shop or mum's house. Um, and this is what I've done throughout my career. So during my time at the BBC, for example, uh, they couldn't afford my full rate. And I wanted to work at the BBC and I wanted to work with uh, the amazing people. Uh, BBC Africa was, was one of the stations. Um, and I negotiated that I'm, I'm happy to come in Monday to Thursday. Uh, I think I negotiated something 10 till three. Those were my working hours. And then on a Friday, I'd work remotely. Uh, and that really worked for me. Then never negotiate down, always sell your ad value. I want to remind you all of how fabulous you all are and how amazing you are in terms of your skill sets and what you can bring to the table. But when negotiating and somebody uh, goes, well, actually, it's a bit high, we don't have that, or this is the rate, take it or leave it. Take a deep breath, and rather than going, okay, then yes, I'll take it, uh, or going, no, I won't take it, and being super hard, resell your value. Resell, well, actually, um, I got a first in my production management uh, degree. Uh, and I spent uh, the last two years of my degree actually working on productions that I sourced myself and I did X, Y, and Z. Uh, or, um, you know, I I've worked in the industry for 15 odd years. I've got great experience uh, in this, 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 the key areas that they're, they're outlining. Um, and again, batting it back to them to make that decision and going away and thinking about it. Um, another thing in ensuring that you are saying yes and living happily ever after, just doing a spin on that, is researching the company business records. Check out who they are, how much money are they making. I did this for um, BT Sport. I knew they had about 26 billion that they spent on Champions League. Um, and it bodes well in many ways. You sort of understand where the company is at financially, although business records can always be skewed, um, depending on what accountant you have. Uh, but it also, it good stead in terms of your negotiation money-wise, and also just conversation, uh, if that's relevant within the interview scenario. Source the decision maker. Always source the decision maker when you are trying to find out more information on a role, for example, um, 
or you want to apply for the role, find out who it is that is actually recruiting for that role. So that's why it's good to start with your peers. If they're already working at BBC Three um, and there's a role uh, for an assistant producer at BBC Three, you can ask them, hey, you know, who's actually recruiting for that role so that you can get in touch with that person or that individual directly uh, to find out more information about the role before you even apply. It's something that I do every single time. Um, bossing my life means I want to know just as much about the company I'm going to potentially be working with um, as much as they might need me. Ask questions about the productions. So when you've got that opportunity to speak to whoever the decision maker, director, head of production, CEO, whoever it is you've tapped into, uh, production coordinator, ask about the production. Uh, ask about the company culture. I'm really mindful of that. Um, navigating the world as a woman of color, it's really important that I understand what diversity there is, uh, what that means for me and my well-being. So I ask, um, and a lot of the time everybody says, it's great, we have beer and pizza. And that's like, okay, that's a good start. I don't drink beer, uh, but we can see where we can go from that. Um, I'm just mindful, everybody, uh, that it's actually 11.32. Um, I'm gonna be wrapping up shortly, um, and I hope that you can still stay with me. And thanks for your patience on me going over slightly. Another good way of asking about the company culture is um, actually calling up the company and speaking to the receptionist, if they have a receptionist, even during the remote times uh, that we're going through at the moment. Um, it's a great way of, uh, first of all, a lot of people just want to be put straight through to whoever it is, and they don't often have a conversation, a human conversation with the receptionist and find out what they're about, you know, what they want to do in life. Um, and then they will often actually just share some really good nuggets about the company, how they're treated. And for me, that's always a good marker or an indicator, indicator rather, uh, to the company culture, um, because that's generally created by the people that they recruit. So uh, definitely a, a good tip with that, do excuse me. <clears throat> check their current rates for your role. So you can do that before you apply or if you're thinking of applying. Again, uh, speaking to your peers or speaking to decision makers. There's a great little tip, uh, something that uh, I've done for many years. First of all, getting a mentor is a good way. If you've got a mentor in the industry, it's a fantastic way of checking out rates. Um, uh, and somebody who's been doing it for a very long time is, is always fantastic. I have one uh, myself. Um, but just sort of sending a message to somebody that you've built a relationship with, a peer that you're already working with, that may be working at Netflix, for example, and just saying, is this figure, 2,600, um, a good figure for a week uh, based at Netflix? Um, and just so you can gauge. So it's, they're not telling you how much they're getting paid, but they may be giving you some information. And if you've got a good relationship and they're open to sharing that with you, that's even better. And then never compromise your well-being. Uh, so if anything doesn't make you feel good, and once you've addressed it with yourself, you've addressed it with the individual or the company, you don't have to stay there, guys. Bossing your life means that you are working on your terms. If something doesn't feel good, have a look elsewhere. Uh, think in abundance. And when I say doesn't feel good, I don't mean challenging in a way that's going to help you grow, because that's a good thing. I mean making you feel uh, completely stressed to the point where you're sick, unwell, not able to do your work, not able to communicate. Um, you're having negative uh, thoughts about yourself, not that butterfly feeling that's like, oh my goodness, am I going to get this right? And you're going to know what that means for you. I use butterflies because that's literally what I have in my stomach. Before I do anything that I love that's important, I know I'm going to grow from that moment and it's actually going to help my well being but don't compromise on it. Really, really important. Um, the way to not compromise again is to be in abundance mode. If you're looking for, for jobs right now, look for loads of work. Do that leg work that I've just mentioned, but look vast. Uh, look externally outside of the UK. Um, work out what that would mean for you after. Um, there's always opportunities. You've got to um, allow yourself to knock on the doors that are important to you. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to give you another quick uh, takeaway, uh, which is to reconnect with someone in your network today. I dare you, I double dare you and set up a Zoom call, whoever it is, someone you've worked with, a peer, a decision maker, um, just send them a, a message on LinkedIn and say, can we have a chat on Zoom and get the conversation going? 
Okay, uh, just again, a quick gentle reminder to go to the Padlet if you haven't already. I think we've got quite a few questions coming through. Um, and I am ready when you are, Kirsty. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. Thanks, Pamela. Um, so yeah, we've got quite a few questions. Um, I'll start with the first one. Um, it's from a recent graduate. Um, I recently graduated and I'm trying to find my first grad job. Um, I'm aware of how competitive TV can be, um, especially while in a smaller city. What are your thoughts about working part-time jobs alongside searching for your break in TV, especially as someone who struggles with money? Okay, uh, first of all, um, thank you for your question. Congratulations on graduating. I hope that you've patted yourself on the back and you've had a party for all the hard work that you've been doing. Thoughts about working part-time. Okay, a lot of that has to do with your sensibility and how you are as an individual. And you've already mentioned some points that you find challenging. So absolutely, working with, in a job outside of TV is only going to do wonders. And let me explain why. So before television, I have worked in McDonald's, in Sainsbury's, in shoe shops, in market stores. I started when I was 13. Um, don't tell anyone. I don't know if that's legal or not. Um, but what that's done, it's made me a super effective communicator, not only in being able to share my story, but also in supporting that of others, empowering others. Um, and I've had a lot of learning and the hiccups along the way but by working for example uh, in a shoe shop there's many different types of people that are going to come in and many different types of conversations that you're going to have boundaries limits um, and if you can learn that uh, whilst you're actually looking for work and working within the industry it's only going to help you tenfold so absolutely i am a big fan of um doing other things and working in other areas whilst being uh, in uh, television or, or looking for jobs within the media um, industry. Really, really good. And when you mention struggling with money, I, I, I want to, there's so many more questions I would like to ask you absolutely in understanding it better, but please take time to actually um, build in your financial literacy. So something that I, I do a one-to-one -one with my coaching, not only helping people actually find jobs within the media, that's, you know, that's super important. That's the end goal of the coaching that I do, but it's to empower them to have the tools to understand how they can continue to navigate way beyond working with myself. So the, the thing that I always mention is financial literacy, read, um, understand about where money came from, uh, you know, go right back, uh, understand what it means for you, understand the languages that you're using about money. Um, how is money spoken about in um, your environment? Is, is there abundance? Is it always uh, struggling, thriving? Um, and work on ways uh, to change that behavior and those languages for yourself. And if you can align all of those things, everything you do uh, will feel more so like it's coming from your terms as opposed from external. So uh, questions I'd ask you, are you struggling with money because everyone else around you has money or you never have enough money at the end of the month? Uh, or you know, are you looking at the external world of energy or are you actually looking inside? What work have you done when it comes to your financial literacy? do that uh, alongside working anywhere to, to build on your communication skills um, and you'll truly boss your life. Thank you very much. Um, the next one, um, so there are a few uh, questions around mental health and anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm worried about my mental health is going to hinder me trying to achieve my career goals. I know I am talented, um, however, I feel myself falling in and out of depressive periods. How do you manage your emotions in an industry that expects you to always be on your game? Wow, thank you for sharing, firstly. Um, and um, I'm sending out lots of good energy and good vibes to you during this time. I love that you know that you're talented. Um, whenever you say I am, followed by whatever, that's the core of who you are. And I want to remind you of that because you've written that. You said, I am talented. And it's super empowering and, and um, important to understand that about yourself. Some of the question I'll ask you is, are you actually tracking your cycle, whether male or female? 
So are you tracking your hormones? Um, uh, you know, where are your cortisol levels? You can do all of these online. Uh, it's a little bit of science, and I'm not saying that it is the pinnacle, but it's a good starting point of actually understanding, oh my goodness, I'm producing this hormone all of the time and that, and why is that happening? Is it because I'm not getting enough, my sugar balances uh, in terms of the food and my snacking? Am I only eating two meals a day? We forget that our bodies, it's a bit like a car, right? If you don't, if you know you're going to go to Birmingham on the weekend and you don't put halfway through your car is going to stall um, and it's not going to move and it's the same with us if we're not feeding ourselves and nourishing ourselves with good food um, good people good environments how are we expected to exert any energy or any positive energy um, so that's that's really important um, doing work on yourself so constantly uh, learning about you personal development going uh therapy sessions reading great books um really important in actually understanding your mental health and, and what that means for you managing your emotion in an industry that expects you to always be on your game look um that can mean many things to many different people and I don't think it's an industry that um, exists that is part of the capitalist system where money is the end goal and the game is actually we need to make sure that we make money for in this production. Uh, you've just got to remember whether that aligns to you in terms of where you're working and what role you've chosen. Um, you know, are you currently in a role that maybe isn't aligned? Have you had that conversation with yourself? It's okay to change. Okay, uh, so I wanted to be a fashion designer when I started out. I went to fashion school, that evolved. Um, you know, I became a production manager, a production coordinator. Uh, I've produced uh, a coach, uh, you know, I flipped burgers, I've done everything. And the, the meaning of talent and aligning that with your well being is to ensure you're actually doing something that you want to do. Uh, and that that's aligned to the company culture that you're working with. So by doing that research in the beginning, that can also help with your mental health. Um, doing that research or finding out about the company, uh, people that are working there, having conversations um, and figuring out whether that is an environment that, that's right for you. So I hope that's been helpful and please continue to work on yourself. You're amazing. Um, yeah, the next question is, um, how to deal with anxiety in a new workplace or at an, an unknown location. Um, how can I empower myself to feel confident entering a new environment? How can I empower myself? Okay, this is a good one. Um, first of all, thank you again for your question. And we all have tools to help us with our personal hygiene, right? Uh, if our breath smells, uh, we know that we've got to brush our teeth or that there's something furry on our tongue and we need to clean, clean our tongue out. So we'll, we'll reach for things. We'll reach for a toothbrush. We'll reach for um, mouthwash, non-alcohol mouthwash for me, whatever works for you. And it's the same with our mental well-being. We need to have tools that we know we can reach to or, or turn to if we're feeling a little bit down, a little bit anxious, and we want to feel empowered. So again, it's something I love doing with the amazing women that I coach one-to-one. -one. There are so many different things you can do, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one. Um, and for me, it's affirmations and saying them out loud. I am great, I am confident, I am amazing, I am strong, uh, I am divine, uh, whatever it is that you wanna say. And what you're doing is you're reaffirming, you're connecting your brain with how you want to feel and with the actions you then want to give um, within that environment. So that wherever you're going into, regardless of the energies or, or what's happening, you know who you are so that you can navigate that accordingly. You obviously need to do all of the, the other work on emotional intelligence, um, role-playing, which is really important and something we don't do enough of uh, in understanding that that is how you empower yourself. Reach for those tools. So whatever they are, if there's something else that you do, breathing, a lovely breathing technique for, for 10 seconds, a bit of meditation, going for a walk, um, whatever tools, that have worked for you in the past, whatever tools that you've tried and you think are fantastic, 
those are what you reach for and that's how you empower yourself so when i'm reaching my autumn phase of my cycle just before my period starts um which i call the winter phase um, I know that I'm hugely critical of myself and being critical is actually good for your survival mode, but not critical in you're bad, you're rubbish, critical in, do you really think you should have done that? How do you think you can do that better? And those are the conversations I can have in my head with myself because I know where I am within my cycle. So knowing who you are, knowing where you are hormonally, male or female, if your testosterone levels are high, uh, you know, we all have an endocrine system, uh, a hormonal system, um, and that we can all find out where we're at in terms of our cortisols and our stressor levels. Um, and then just finding the tools that are your go-to and make them easy for you. Make them really easy to, to, to obtain, you know, have your affirmations written somewhere or have something that you can easily check in on your phone or listen to, whether it's frequencies, whatever works for you. Um, that's super important. I hope that was helpful. Thank you. And um, so do you have any advice on that moment when you're alone at an event or networking that everyone is much older and in their own groups talking amongst themselves and you feel like the useless fifth wheel? Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, for sharing. And I think just to go back a little bit, I'm going to set you a challenge, right? Whoever you are. And um, be safe, because I know it's a pandemic. But if you're going out today or tomorrow and you see a group of people, I dare you to just go in and say hello to that group of strangers. What you're doing is you are uh, nurturing your brain and your physicality to do something that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. Um, and the more you do that, the more you will naturally be able to do that within a networking environment. So uh, for me, I'll give you an example of what I do. And I do it to this day. I keep practicing and I keep you know, interacting with uh, various people that I don't know. And I'll say, uh, happy Wednesday. How are you guys doing today? People are like, oh, hi. Yeah, I'm doing great. Fantastic. I'm like, oh. oh, and I might hear an accent or I might see something interesting and I'll go, Oh, where, where are you from? I'm from Italy. Fair, but do you live here? Are you visiting? Oh, I'm just visiting. And do you know, I'm actually looking and then the conversation can flow naturally. So yeah, just sort of um, do, do a little bit of that. And that will help you naturally within that uh, networking environment. So, you know, you could come in and if you say no, one of the people, because you've done a bit of research about some of, of the people that are going to be at this event, and then go, oh, hi, um, how's everyone doing? Um, this is my first time at this event. You know, start that conversation and go, oh, I think we're connected on LinkedIn. And I saw that you did X, Y, and Z. Get that conversation going. Um, there's lots more layers and nuances to that. Absolutely. Um, sort of understanding how to pick, uh, let's say, uh, the most talkative person in the room or the least talkative person in that space, depending on what it is that you want to get out of that. Um, so lots of reading about emotional intelligence um, and interacting will definitely help you. Uh, but I would suggest that you go out and you do that to a bunch of strangers in a safe space, please, um, and see how that goes. Uh, I want to add just a little bit, Kirsty, to a little point that they mentioned. How do you politely get out of weird conversations? <laughs> um, now, I would love to ask you what kind of weird conversations are you having? Because that, that sounds fabulous to me. Weird can sometimes be authentic. Um, if it's weird and uncomfortable or weird and, and not where you want to be, um, you can literally just start with, it's been great speaking with you. Um, if you are in a scenario that's a networking, um, I'm just going to pop over and uh, speak to some other people. Um, look forward to connecting with you or thank you for your time and keep it as simple as that. Um, there's many questions I have for you because weird can again mean so many things and the context. Uh, but if it's in a networking environment, absolutely just say, oh, it's been great speaking with you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, the next question, um, which you probably be able to help with, um, I'm a father of four young children and need to keep money coming in. What advice would you have getting a fit in the industry whilst also managing the family? Okay. First of all, congratulations, Super Dad. Uh, you are part of a duo that's birthed little humans into the world. Well done. 
Uh, can I also just state that that is a job within itself um, and um, be mindful of that, that you are doing a job. It's another job. Uh, it's an important job. Um, I think sort of similarly to the uh, question that was answered, that was asked earlier about struggling with money, it's financial literacy. Uh, it's doing that reading. Um, they sort of state, when I say they, scientists, uh, it was quoted in The Guardian actually, uh, I can't remember the name of the university, that basically said that uh, if you have about 10,000 hours in a particular subject, that you are an expert in that subject. Uh, so, uh, for example, if you've got 10,000 hours of, of reading uh, about pilots, about money, about children, you become an expert within your own right in terms of where you're located. So, um, yes, there are practical things, absolutely, that you can do right now in terms of, of looking for work, of getting work that's aligned to what you're doing. One of the points that I mentioned about writing down your professional skills and aligning that to some of your passions and things that you can do right now. Do that work. Uh, if you've been working for a long time already, um, and you you know you want something new, something different, or something that you, you know you can add value to the family, because your well-being is just as important, Dad. Excuse me, and you shouldn't just take a role because you need the money to to come in. You can actually have that time to look at those skills and find a role that's aligned to what you want to do. Um, and then alongside that, financial literacy. Read the books. Read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Um, uh, rich millionaire mindset um, go online and um, there's there's so much information out there and it, it isn't about necessarily uh, again it's looking at the relationship that you have with money what does it mean for you uh, do you think of it as something that's abundant or is that something that you never have enough of look back in your childhood which is something I did and I actually did EFT training Regini um, she's my really good friend and she does EFT which is emotional freedom tapping and what that did it actually just released me of all of my ideologies of money that I had that was handed down to me by my parents who did an amazing job they're phenomenal parents um, but I wanted to stop that cycle and actually be in abundance mode always so I did that work and that helped me. Um, and I, I hope that's been helpful, Super Dad. Great. Um, we have quite a few other questions. I just um, thought that maybe Pamela, you might want to share how people can contact you or maybe book a session with you if they're interested. Absolutely. I am happy uh, to continue answering the questions for the next 10 minutes, Kirsty, if that's still okay, okay. with you. That's but. Um, if you yeah, would like to book a one to one uh, session with myself, uh, you can click the link in the boss your media life I uh, currently work with women uh, or people who identify as women uh, in literally supporting them to align their professional skills with their soul's purpose. Uh, a lot of the women that I work with already work in, in the media industry are starting out or they're already in it or they're sort of thinking about leaving it and also doing a, a side hustle as uh, something that I've done successfully uh, for the past three years. Um, so yeah, if you literally just want to have an initial conversation, you fill in a form, book in a time that's good for you, uh, we can have a one hour chat and uh, we can see whether or not there's something I can help you with or I can ask some, uh, answer some of your initial questions. Um, so yeah, feel free to check out the link uh, in the Padlet just here. Thank you, Kirsty. That's right. Um, so for those of us who have mental illnesses such as depression, do you have any advice as to how to approach employers and co-workers and when should we communicate this? Wow, that's a really, really good question. And um, firstly, thank you for sharing um, and wishing you good energy, good vibes at my end. Now, I think that if you are doing the research in terms of where you wanna work and what's gonna make you happy, okay? What's going to align to your soul's purpose? You're actually going to go into a working environment that is going to give you those feel-good hormones. Um, but there may be days, absolutely, that your, your mental illness will kick in. And I'm hoping that you're getting really good support on that and that you have tools that you're going to be able to work with. But ultimately, if you're working somewhere that actually makes you feel good, you will never need to have that conversation. Um, uh, you know, if you need a day off, 
have that day off and you can express that absolutely um the the key is to express it authentically uh it ensure that actually am i depressed because of where i'm at in my life with my work um and is this a healthy place for me even to be in so a lot of questions that you absolutely should ask yourself i hope that you have tools that are helping you uh, to understand your mental illness um because no one is actually just one state all of the time they're all varying levels of mental health and mental illnesses know what that means for you know what your triggers are and know what spaces you need to be in that are actually going to make you feel good so you're like right i want to work in production but wait actually if i'm going to spend majority of my time in an office with one window or well, i want to be an editor that's the um uh, role i should have mentioned is that really aligned to me? Being in the dark does not make me feel great. I love gardening. Actually, I might just be a, a gardener, a landscape gardener. Can I do that for Disney? <laughs> Can I go and work uh, as a landscape gardener uh, for Netflix? Um, you know, uh, and really just being authentic to yourself because I know I like greenery and I like light and I want to be with earth and that makes me feel good. Um, so yeah, really important just to have the conversation with yourself first. Um, and yeah, you're absolutely entitled to have a day off, no, uh, or time off and, and to communicate that effectively, but just know that the, you know, the capitalist industry that we're in is, doesn't have the same level of compassion. So there are humans who do absolutely, but the ideology isn't for compassion. So be mindful of that. And again, if that doesn't work for you, set up your own thing, then you never have to explain to anyone else. Um, that's the advice that I would give anyone uh, starting out, um, you know, please be building your own company, uh, whether that's just being self employed and having a limited company so that you're starting out having full control of what you want to do, where you want to go, how many people you want to work for, uh, with um, really important. So yeah, I really hope that's helped. And wishing you lots of love. Um, so I've really struggled with figuring out both my day rate as a producer, um, so I think you touched on this earlier, what is my true rate versus my years of experience and also communicating that to decision makers when I don't know yet this is a rate I am quote unquote worth. Okay, day rate as a producer. First of all, thank you for sharing. Um, totally understand where you're coming from. I've been in, in this scenario myself. Um, so first of all, I want to take you back to the points that I mentioned in the masterclass, which is you need to work out your life expenses. What is it that you need to live on in terms of everything? Um, your bills, your life, your jet setting lifestyle, whatever it is that you want to do. What is it? What are your bills? Like I can categorically tell you uh, how much I need to live on for the year. And uh, for me, being financially independent is really important. So everything that I do, anything that I negotiate, I'm going to have that as my goal because I know what that figure is. Uh, so then whistle it down and do the research that I've mentioned, speaking to other peers, other producers, finding out how long people have been pretty much just so that you've got a gauge, you've got a, um, some figures to work with. Because look, whether you are working for the BBC or for Netflix, they're going to have different budgets, different rates. Um, there isn't an industry standard. There are just company standards based on what budget they have. So that in mind, it's really important that you know what figure you need to meet to reach to buy that house um, to ensure that you're traveling to a different country every month for a year, which is something I wanted to do in 2018. And I did successfully because that's what I did. I did that work beforehand. Um, and also be mindful because I like what you said, my true rate versus my years of experience. I'd love to know more about what you mean about that and dig deeper. I've got a few more questions that I would love to ask you. Um, but taking it literally for, for what I see, it's important to know that, ex that you, your rate is actually that, your experience, um, and that you, it's not your time. So I'll give you a quick example. During my time at BBC Africa, I um, negotiated some work at BBC Brazil. And for me to be able to do that, uh, they wanted me to do some extra budgets for them. Um, and I gave them my rate to do that. It took me 10 minutes 
to do those budgets. It doesn't matter that it took me 10 minutes and that my rate was some extra zeros. The point was that the point is, is that you're getting my experience um, as opposed to it maybe taking me a week or two weeks. So really be mindful of that, that it's your experience that you're offering um, and not your time. Um, and also communicating that to decision makers. Well, don't communicate to them if you don't know your rate. A great book is called Split the Difference by something Von, I can't remember his other name. Um, fantastic book. He was an ex-FBI agent. Um, do you know what? I should really, I don't know if I've added that. Oh, I have. Never Split the Difference, sorry, by Chris Voss. A, a really good book uh, to understand how to negotiate. I recommend it. Uh, it's, it's hardcore, but you can take some very good elements from it from yourself. So never go somewhere unprepared uh, because then it's a lot easier for that person or that other individual to get you to negotiate and meet where they're at. You must always be prepared. Do that work for yourself. Find out what your expenses are. Find out what your rate brackets are. Um, read Chris Voss, figure out how to negotiate or come and join me, have a one to one chat with me. Um, it's something that I do and practice and support um, uh, women in uh, being able to do that for themselves. So I hope that's been helpful. Your time for one more? Yeah. 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 Um, do you think age is a barrier, such as um, a mother with a long career gap? Um, that can seem impossible. What was the last bit? Sorry. Um, do you think age is a barrier, such as a mother with long career gap, it can seem impossible? Okay, uh, again, I'd have lots. First of all, thank you for sharing. Um, I'm actually speaking, I've got a one to one session with a mum next week. I'm super looking forward uh, to speaking with her. Um, in short, I am going to say no, <laughs> because the limitations are created by yourself. So if you believe that the age is a, a, um, a barrier and that you've had a career gap then and that you don't have anything to bring, then that's true. But if you believe that um, by being a mum, you've acquired many other skills, you may have done many other learnings uh, during that time, um, uh, created, uh, you know, maybe some online courses, done other things, or if, if not, then just being a mum is enough. Um, then that's also right. And that you're coming into an environment saying, this is actually what I wanna do because these are my skill sets. Um, it, I know it's a conversation that we hear a lot because we, especially as women, we don't have linear CVs. Uh, we tend to flit from lots of different places. Um, and I have my theory on that. Uh, so does my partner who owns a recruitment agency here in the city. Um, and a lot of it is to do with well-being and actually trying to find a place that's aligned to where we want to be and, and what we want to do. And a lot of the, the environments are quite cold and, and, and dispassionate. And that's that can be the same also for a person who identifies as a woman and even a man as well. It, I, I'm not uh, separating the genders. I'm, I'm just talking about the, the ideology as a whole. Um, and it it's always sort of seen as sometimes a negative thing that you've taken some time out, but how you communicate that, how you address it and how you align that to where you wanna go is really important. So uh, something that I've actually done myself that I'm, I'm happy to share, having been in the industry for a long time and decided actually that I don't want to be in the industry anymore. I want to be able to empower and support people who are in the industry. And then I went to a next level and I did all of that work in understanding my skill sets had a baby and realized that actually I, I want to coach even more. Um, and that is my soul's purpose. And I'm going to align those skill sets. And even if, you know, I, I've taken, I haven't actually had any maternity leave or taken some time out, but I will be. Um, that, and, and, you know, having that break means that I can actually work out what I really want to do and where I want to be. Um, and then when you're going into interview scenarios or situations, you're going into them with conviction because they're actually aligned. Um, so your mindset in terms of how you approach uh, your next stage is going to be super important, but uh, I wish you all the best, super mum. You'll be fine. What advice would you give to someone who is mid-level talent struggling to overcome the industry biases as it relates to BAME female talent and mid-senior positions? This has prevented me from receiving opportunities despite using network, my network and actively applying for roles, especially within TV and film. It's been ex extremely difficult to overcome this and has affected my mental health. Thank you very much for sharing um, and uh, sending you good vibes, good energy. 
Um, I'm just trying to understand slightly, do excuse me. Um, what advice would you give someone who is mid-level talent struggling to overcome the industry biases as it relates to, when you say BAME, I think I did an article recently and I don't like the word BAME. So I try to process this in my mind. Um, but as it relates to BAME talent immediate, this has prevented me from, so are you saying because you are in the BAME acronym that you are not being able to um, move above mid-level talent um, or mid-senior positions because of how you're being perceived in terms of whether your color, your language. Um, and if that's the case, that's how I'm gonna answer uh, from that. I totally understand where you're coming from. As a woman of color, I've had to navigate a system that uh, doesn't believe I can be professional, um, that has lots of unconscious bias, um, so many layers that uh, in some cases don't even believe I'm human. Um, you know What that means for me is I've flipped that around and I've gone, well, actually I can communicate on so many levels with so many different people. I am not just going to be holden to, first of all, one industry, but more importantly, just to one area. So some of the questions and some of the things I can um, back, back at you is like, are you looking internationally? Are you looking outside? I've worked remotely internationally um, at some, much higher levels. I've consulted um, in areas where I haven't been able to consult here in the UK. So like Red Bull Media is an example. Um, and then was able to get on a plane and just travel to Brazil, Austria. I was literally there one week in, the, uh, in Austria and one week in the UK um, and loved it because I was, um, you know, my, my experience was taken seriously. Um, I was in a more of a consultant role, which is something that I wanted to do. Uh, I got travel. Um, and yes, there were unconscious biases that I've had to deal with um, that I've approached if I felt they were reasonable at the time, um, if it didn't make me feel good or if it affected my mental health. Another thing that's really important is just to have, take some time. If you have a week, two weeks, a month, three months, however long time means for you, and actually just reevaluate your skills and have a look at the things that are important to you and see if you can transition that elsewhere. Uh, see what you can do in terms of maybe a side hustle that can be a business, whether it's something uh, in terms of incorporating all of your skill sets um, and making it work elsewhere. The key is to, constantly be asking yourself the question, if this isn't making me feel good, what will? Um, what do I need to make me feel happy um, and to be mindful of my mindset? Um, I, the news reports, they're really important, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's important to find out what's happening, uh, dip in and out. For me, for my mental well-being, I don't read the news. I don't listen to the news apart from once every month or so with my partner. And when I do, I make sure that I'm reading lots of different types of news um, so that I get a breadth of understanding, whether it's news in Africa, China, Russia and the UK, um, because for my mental well-being, that's super important. So. Going back to the point, you have 10 years experience, that's phenomenal. You sound super knowledgeable, you're professional. I can hear in the way that you're talking, you've got great energy, you know who you are. So just figure out where you wanna be um, and stop dwelling, or not stop, don't dwell on the places that aren't aligned to you. Um, and if that door isn't there for you, or if that's not a door that you can um, comfortably walk through, then look somewhere else. Be in abundance mode um, and always come from a place of uh, just challenging your own biases. Like, well, why do I want to move up? Is it because I want to make more money or is it because I want a title? Well, if it's because I want to make more money, maybe I should go into cryptocurrency. No, I didn't say that, okay? Because I'm in cryptocurrency. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, well, maybe I should go somewhere else because if it's just about financial freedom, but actually, no, it's about the role and the title. Well, why do I want this role? Why do I want this title? Oh, my ego says that makes me feel great. Oh, okay, but then after that, what does that mean? You know, it's like, oh no, it means that I will be successful. But if that's the case, then that's what you need to map out for yourself. And it's really important just to ask those conversations. Um, you know, the yeah, I, I, be really mindful of that. Know that. Do lots of reading, please. Uh, White Fragility is a really good book. Um, I recommend that to, to anyone. 
uh, wherever you're from to actually understand uh, how systems work and how people may view things and how you can then best navigate that for yourself without having to dumb your energy down, uh, without having to, to come across as if you're almost begging for a role, which is not what we want to do, your abundance mode always. Um, I hope that's helped. I'm shifting careers from another creative field to TV. I want to work in docs and have some of the skills needed in docs from my previous experience. I might get offered a role in another genre. It's not what I want to do long term, but it would be my first job in TV. Should I say no and focus on looking for roles in what I want to do or just take the chance because TV is so competitive and tough to get into and see what happens? Okay. First of all, thank you for sharing. Again, I have been in, in your scenario um, and totally understand. And so, I, and I know I mentioned this, sort of saying no and living happily ever after. Um, and to get to that stage, you need to know what's going to work for you and what's not. I rarely say no to an experience that's new and fresh that I've never encountered. Because if you come from the place of, don't come from the, the, the survival, TV is competitive and tough and it's so hard to get into. Come from abundance and think, this could be an opportunity that could lead somewhere else. If you come from that space, you're bringing that energy into your work. And when by doing that, you can also then happily say no if that work doesn't work for you. But if you go into that space going, oh, this is it, there's nothing else there. It's so competitive, I've got to do it. I don't like it, I hate it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. What you're doing to your brain and your 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 um, sort of you know, you know the cells and, and all the chemicals and hormones in your body is, is you're saying, now that I'm here, there's really toxic things happening, but I'm going to stay here because there's nothing else. Whereas if you're going into the situation with right, this is going to be a new experience. I'm going to learn something from this. Um, uh, it's going to be amazing. Um, but there's so many more opportunities out there. So when you're in that scenario you're going to take all of the good things and if you see challenging things feel challenging things you'll be a better place to go actually this isn't for me because you've trained your body to and your mind to actually know what should feel good because you're coming from a place of positivity um, as a place of scarcity which then keeps you there because you're living in fear and thinking I can't jump ship or go anywhere else um, I hope that's helped um, and yeah go out live experiences do amazing things and just always check in on yourself really important Thank you very much. And just lastly, the last question was, would you consider opening the coaching one to one to, to males too? super dad in need of advice so relating back to the <laughs> previous question? If not, can you recommend? Um, a oh, I'm super dad, I would love to meet you. Um, and I did work with amazing men uh, as well. Uh, but I sort of just um, whittled down my niche even more. Uh, but I can absolutely recommend uh, an amazing colleague uh, who has actually done some coaching with me and has done some therapy with me and she works with men and women. She's phenomenal. So um, absolutely just leave a message somewhere in terms of how you can get in touch with me um, via the website. I'm trying to think how else might be the best way or just fill in the book, the one to one. And then I've got all of your details and I can literally just connect you. And uh, with uh, with Jeannie, who's amazing, so absolutely. That's all the questions. <laughs> Thank you so That's much. Awesome. That was no. amazing. Really, really helpful. I bet all our members, um, you know, feel so energized and motivated from that. Um, I definitely feel so. <laughs> that was really great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Kirsty, thank you for your support in the last couple of days uh, in setting all of this up. Um, and thank you to the Royal Television Society for uh, offering this fantastic opportunity. Um, I just want to leave you all uh, just a gentle reminder that you are amazing and that I appreciate you. Please continue to boss your life. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.